Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope everybody's day is going great. Mine has been really cool. So as you guys know, I am in New York. I'm super excited for the Overwatch League and we had some awesome news come out today. So first we're going to be talking about Jane. Today was announced that Jane would be joining the Dallas Fuel as an assistant coach. Now that is huge. Well deserved. He's been working very hard. The head coach of Canada. It wasn't just him though. A guy named Takati is also joining as an assistant coach as well. So really awesome opportunity for two guys who definitely deserve it. I'm going to cover that situation. There's also been some other news. DJ Khaled, guys, is going to be performing at the Overwatch League. That's insane. I'm going to cover that and everybody else who is performing with him. And then lastly, we're going to be taking a look at all the other little things that dropped today in the news. If you guys are new around here and you enjoy my content, do not forget, click that red subscribe button. It helps support my channel and also drop a like down below. And now, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the video. So starting off with the Dallas Fuel and Jane news, they announced this today on their website. Dallas-based esports organization NV Gaming announced additions to its coaching staff in competitive Overwatch. The Dallas Fuel signed Justin Jane Conroy and Luis Takati Lebowang, probably butchered that, as assistant coaches for the Overwatch League franchise, with each coach joining the staff full-time in September. Team Envy recently signed Shu as the new Envy Overwatch coach in Overwatch Contenders. Fueled by the mid-season addition of head coach Aaron Arrow Atkins, the Dallas Fuel finished Season 1 of the Overwatch League with an impressive resurgence to the group's winning ways, earning a Stage 4 playoff off birth. Envy Gaming is one of the largest esports organizations in the world, managing competitive teams and popular streaming personalities, spanning multiple gaming titles while owning and operating the Dallas Fuel franchise in the Overwatch League. Jane is the current coach for Team Canada in the 2018 Overwatch World Cup and has a background in content creation, aeronautics, and gaming education. Takati most recently served as assistant coach and analyst for FNRGFE, where he worked under then FNRGFE and now Dallas Fuel and Team USA World Cup head coach Aaron Atkins. As we continue to build our confidence among players on our roster and look to capitalize on our dynamic end of season success, Jane and Takati will be tremendous help in rounding out the skills and focus needed on our coaching staff. We look forward to the both of them joining us in Los Angeles, said Aero. Both bring a remarkable aptitude for quickly analyzing gameplay and leave no stone unturned in breaking down footage and helping us create a culture and philosophy that help our players improve and assist the team in reaching its goals. I want to thank Peak for all he gave to the team this year. He stepped in at a pivotal moment to fill a void for Fuel coaching staff, and we wish him the best as he pursues other opportunities in professional gaming, said Matt Taylor. And there it is, guys. That's everything the Dells Fuel had to say about this pickup and also the dropping of Peak, who did come in after they fired Kai Kai and pretty much was the interim head coach. Obviously, most of the credit does go to Aero and what he's done for this team once he took over, but Peak definitely did a decent job in the transition time and best of luck for him finding a new team. Now, as for Jane coming in, this guy is a hard worker. You guys see his streams, you see his YouTube videos every single day. He is there, he's grinding, he's talking about how you can improve, he's talking about how the Overwatch League teams can improve, and he also talks about himself and how he can improve, which is really good. Anytime you can get somebody who is a hard worker and wants to improve themselves, you know they're going to be great. And I can see him really becoming a good assistant coach under Aero. Now, obviously, it's kind of funny, as mentioned, Team Canada's head coach is Jane. Team USA's head coach is Aero, so they're working on the same Overwatch League team. That should be very interesting, especially come group stage time, because USA and Canada are both in the same bracket, or I should say group, so they're guaranteed to play each other twice. They did say in the announcement that the assistant coaches would not be joining the team till September, which is around the time of the World Cup, so I don't know if they're going to be able to like work on their Overwatch League team together and see how each other coach, and then go against each other in World Cup. That would definitely make it more epic and say Jane wins you know maybe he's the better coach maybe he should be the head coach not the co-coach should be really fun and now moving on to Takati real quick so they did mention he worked with FNR GFE under Aero as an analyst and co-coach so this means him and Aero do have experience in the past working together which is probably why he did get the job or at least why he got a trial and then he proved that yeah he can be a good analyst in the Overwatch League and yeah basically here we are now as for the coaches joining I definitely think they're up 
upgrades over Peak and Kaikai. Kai. Obviously, anybody's an upgrade over Kaikai. Kai. We saw that with Aero. Honestly, Aero could be an average coach, and we don't even know it. We just think he's amazing because Kaikai Kai was so bad, and he was holding back this star-studded roster, and now they're shining. Maybe it's not because Aero's like some insane coach. I'm sure he's good. 100% he's good, but he might not be absolutely amazing because we're comparing him to Kaikai. Kai. Now with Jane coming in, Takati coming in, the Dallas Field now have every resource they need inside and outside the game. So like, there's no excuses for them. If they come out and flop in season two again, it's all on them and we might even need a roster change. I'm not going to say that for sure yet though. We definitely are going to have to wait and see for next season, but I actually really do like these pickups. I think it will improve Dallas Fuel for the long run and I can't wait to see them in season two. Now moving on to the next piece of news, this has to do with the Philadelphia Fusion. We're talking about Neptuno. So if you guys don't remember, a couple weeks ago, Neptuno tweeted before their match in the Overwatch League against the Boston Uprising that he had a kidney stone and he was sick playing in the match prior. A lot of people were shocked and a lot of people felt bad for him. I did personally because Neptuno is honestly one of the best mercies in the game, especially when it comes to fragging out. We all love seeing Neptuno go bloodthirsty. It's one of the greatest things ever. But he did this while all having a kidney stone. That's insane for the level of performance he's been having. And good news for him, he tweeted this out today. Good news, my kidney stone just came out naturally. I'm keeping it in the water bottle and naming it Rocky at Fusion. Now, that's a little weird to say, not gonna lie. I don't know what kidney stones look like. I've never had one. I'm sure they're painful. They really do sound like they're not fun, but he's gonna keep it, name it Rocky. It's a little weird. Anyways, congratulations to him, and I'm super happy that he's gonna be able to be at full strength for the finals because I just wanna see the best match possible all the way down to the very last map and the very last team fight is how I prefer it. And Neptuno is definitely a key member for the Philadelphia Fusion. Well, honestly, who isn't a key member for either of their teams in this final? That's why it is the Grand Finals. Everybody is so damn good, and I would hate to see somebody not feeling great and underperform because of it. All in all, I'm so stoked, guys. We are literally two days away. I'm going to be there in the Barkley Center watching live. Oh, man, I cannot wait for it to all unfold. All right, and now moving on to the next big piece of news, guys, and this is so cool, and it makes me even more excited for the Overwatch League Finals. The Overwatch League posted this on their website today we got talent check out the amazing live talent we've assembled for the grand finals scheduled performers include dj khaled on saturday special musical guest dj khaled will play a set before the first match of the day kicks off dj khaled's performance will be streamed exclusively on twitch now before we move on to the other guys that are also performing i just want to say this is absolutely huge dj khaled is a massive star and this will definitely bring mainstream eyes onto the overwatch league and that's definitely something we need right now when there's a game out there like fortnite getting all the casual views getting all of the mainstream media attention it's time that overwatch league can possibly get some as well now talking about the other guys i don't know if these guys are big or small i really haven't heard of any of them but on Friday, DJ Mick will spin it up for the audience between breaks in the broadcast. On Saturday, DJ Envy will drop beats from the moment the doors open until DJ Khaled's set, and then during broadcast breaks. Performance Painting David Garibaldi, a local artist who speed paints to music, will create his take on the Overwatch League logo. The finished work will be given away to a lucky fan. And this painting thing is only going to happen on Friday. And by the way, look this guy's name up. It's actually so cool. I'm super stoked to see this in real life. He's going to be doing the Overwatch League logo. And guys, if I somehow randomly win this, I will give it away to you guys 100%. So be sure to drop a comment down below letting me know if you guys are super excited about DJ Khaled or if you know who DJ Envy, DJ Mick, this uh, painter is, any of the guys, let me know down below. And let's move on now and talk about some other things. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look now at the South Korean roster because Nanohana, aka Flower, who was on the Korean World Cup roster last year and was pretty much the MVP, shared his thoughts about it. So this is what he was asked. What are your thoughts on the South Korea's World Cup roster this year? He responded and said, there's no problem in roster easy win. Now, I know there's been a lot of people recently complaining that, oh man, maybe they should have waited a little bit for the South Korean roster or held trials at least, because it seems like the London Spitfire players are all of a sudden better. And obviously it's just, it's crazy that Profit isn't on the South Korean World Cup roster, let alone a freaking all-star. That's a joke. I should talk about that again someday, but we're not going to get into it too much here. I do agree with Flower. I think that the roster is strong and they probably will still have an easy win, even though most of them play together in NYXL 
they choked in the playoffs. I just don't see any of the other World Cup rosters being able to stand up to them. Yeah, Finland's good. Yeah, USA and Canada are also good. But they're not the London Spitfire, you know? They're not the Philadelphia Fusion. They're not going to be able to beat pretty much NYXL. And this also clears up that a lot of people were saying Flower might have been a little bit salty or should have been on the roster. I don't think Flower should have made it. I like the roster they selected. They just should have added profit and, you know, maybe, I don't know. It's good. It's it's a hard decision when the Koreans are all so damn good. You got Carpe on there already. He's insane. Yeah, Sabiobi's insane. Maybe Profit would have been better in this meta, sure, but we don't even know what meta is going to be at the World Cup. Like, you obviously have to go with Jonak no matter what, but like, after Overwatch League, if London Spitfire do win and Bedosin has another amazing performance like he's had, like, maybe he would have been the better guy because we're going into a meta where supports now need to play Tracer, Roadhog, it's not just Zenyatta, and Bedosin honestly has been playing so damn good on those heroes, he looks like a DPS main or a flex tank main, and Jonak honestly wasn't able to do that, so... It really is all about metas and just like who's good right now. But as I said, Korean roster is still too stacked. They will win it all. And that's going to be it for the video, guys. We definitely had some interesting news drop today. Let me know down below if you guys enjoyed this video. What was your favorite part of it? And leave a like on it. Subscribe for more daily content. I'm out of here, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.